Welcome back to Elite Gameplay Analysis. My name is John, professional EAFC coach. If you guys like this type of content, you guys can book a private session with me on Medify. But this is where I'm going to break down and show you guys exactly where to go, what to do step by step throughout this match. Now we're going to start at the second half. But that's what we're going to be thinking about. And also, guys, uh, let's go ahead and show you my tactics. So this is my 150K. It's my second account. I'll just show you guys I'm an elite. I just got an elite. Uh, yesterday if you guys saw my post on Twitter but basically I'm going to break down and explain to you guys why I'm using this team and then we're going to get into the gameplay that way you guys have my tactics and understanding and then you can see that in the gameplay as well so first off I wanted to build a team that had some play styles I was rocking like a 50k team got really tough around division two so we ended up going in I want a finesse plus this is an absolute must for finishing finishing Finesse shot plus, gotta get it. Um, when it came to technical plus, wasn't crazy about it, but the five star skills is really nice. I kind of like these guys more as a winger kind of a cam, but I think the four two three one narrow really allows you to feel a central attack, and so I like both of these as well. Dembele is one of my favorite players and speed that kind of like that weird you know rapid pace that's fantastic. Wurtz is my favorite player on the team because of the incisive pass plus. The way I play, he makes this game so much easier, incisive pass plus. I The 20,000 coins that this card is, this is, to me, uh, like an 800,000 coin value for how I play at this game. Uh, Alex Garcia, the most, honestly, the most surprising one of them all. Uh, this press-proven four-star weak foot guy with anticipate and ping pass he, I mean, he's he's ideal to be able to pivot the play and move it up. So I use him as my pivot. And then Berea's kind of a weird one. He's, like, really good, but he, like, he doesn't have anything that's, like, really good about him, but he doesn't have any flaws either. And the Relentless Plus just adds to, like, not having flaws that, like, makes him good. The only thing I would say is flaws are really the, uh, I, he has a he has four-star weak. I, I actually didn't even, I, I thought he was so doesn't have any flaws dude he just doesn't he's he's right up there i'm just like okay i guess i had to keep him uh sarkina carchali probably the best left back that is cheap 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 i originally had davies here davies was exhausted i originally had tamori instead of schlotterbeck tamori was terrible um schlotterbeck insane value actually before i had dembele i actually had dibala here i had tamori instead of marquinhos and we were rocking man yine man yine whoa Something's off on that card, but Marquinhos, Intercept Plus. Uh, I, I wish I had an Anticipate Plus and an Intercept Plus combo, but besides that, Frimpong's a rock. So let's go ahead and get into some of what we're doing here with this. So the reason why we're doing this is three Shadow Strikers at Cam, and you guys can use that code as well. So basically, this is what it looks like. This is what my attack looks like. Now um the the right side so like right here this area of the pitch is much more defended than it looks uh it's just that Frimpong's on a fullback defense so he just stays back so he gets a little bit wider out there so it doesn't look as much but what i like to do is i like to attack through the left and build my triangles through Karchali, Berea, Musiala and then what you'll see is i actually have Martinez on false nine so he comes back and works goes forward now the way i play i'm very intricate with my build up and so my through passes are really really unique and so what i like to do is i like to pass the ball directly to martinez and then plays it back two words in which then i'm trying to finagle my way through and get martinez now i don't know if i get that in this match because the defender today was actually relatively solid but besides that we're on counter and aggressive so it's pretty st straightforward Fullback defend deep line playmaker is probably the most important one out of everything else. Um, but left back goes forward. Uh, CDM kind of goes into. So if I go and I show you right here, the kind of like what he looks like, it goes into that kind of that cam position and that can be really effective for the buildup. And so then Brea staying back allows for uh, recover recover like a recovery position for Karchawi as it covers that side and then Frempong staying back def helps me defend that in CDM position if the play gets pinched to that side so um 
very it's very balanced. Um, it's you know four or five guys going forward, four or five guys staying back all the time. And if I want to manually push people forward, that's the idea. So these are the tactics that we're going to be using. So let's go ahead and get right into the gameplay analysis. But before we get into the gameplay analysis, I do want to talk to you guys about FC Alert. If you guys need help make, if you guys need help getting coins, check out fcalert.ai. This is a, a website that I am a co-founder on where we have trained an AI how to trade on the transfer market using AI technology to be able to tell you when to buy. It looks like if Donnie Vandebeek just went on a buy and it looks like he just sold uh, another trade here. Kovacic bought and sold relatively quickly. This one uh, is looking like uh, there's a Cahill in the market for a buy. And so you can get direct alerts straight to your phone telling you when to buy, when to sell all day long. It never stops. And for our advanced traders, we just launched a new AI suggestions list, which allows you to actually go through an entire list of trades that you guys find valuable and you guys can make trades based off of, the, of those suggestions, which is absolutely incredible. So now you guys can also add this to your portfolio. If you want to, you just click here and you'll actually see uh, add to portfolio. Uh, if I do this right here, if I hit add to portfolio, you'll see right card right there. And then you can come to your actual portfolio where you, in, you can import your entire club here. And so we're just uh, showing you guys as values here. And then you can put those players in here, set, set alerts. So let's say you uh, it's current by current price is five ninety nine, and so you were able to pick that up for five seventy five, five hundred seventy five thousand coins. And then you want to sell it for let's say six hundred thirty thousand. That's what you think is going to go to. You can set that alert to go ahead and hit at 630,000 and boom, now you'll get alert directly to your phone and you've updated it saying, hey, it'll say, hey, Frank Rykard's at this price, go ahead and sell that. So guys, get started trading with AI. You guys can do so um, with the link below. And if you guys do have issues with it, make sure you guys reach out to me on uh, Discord and we can go ahead and I can help you guys out there. But we're gonna go ahead and start at like the, I'm gonna try and make it relatively shorter um but we're gonna let's start at like the we're gonna start at like the 53 minute okay uh because the first half there was no no movement uh, it looks kind of back and forth so you can kind of see i'm trying to rip i'm trying let's uh let's get to the build up here okay so here's the wing play if you're seeing this here comes my attack through the middle this is verts um and so this is i believe is that this is actually forward position with Frimpong. So this is me manually playing Frimpong forward. So if we go back, as you guys know, my tactics were just set to where Frimpong doesn't go forward. But this is where he kind of can go. Remember how he can go like he can go like into like this territory. This is like his territory. So this is where Frimpong can go. And so he'll stop right there. If you see that, he'll stop. But when the buildup gets all pushed over here, this is where you're wanting to hit that swing play. So the buildup gets pushed into a corner. And so we're going to swing the ball all the way. This is me manually playing him in forward position now. So we're going against our tactics. So when I say, guys, don't think of your tactics as the how you win and lose. Think of that you are the tactics, right? You're, I like to think of tactics as your AI control center. All it does is dictate what the AI should be doing as much as possible, even though there are some issues with AI right now. But okay, so we get forward here, and now we have, it looks like Garcia here. We've got, uh, I think, is this Martinez? Or this is Verts? This is Garcia. Anyways, okay, let's go forward. That's Dembele in the box. There goes Verts. There's, uh, this is Barrea, so Garcia's back. But Garcia actually goes and defends Frempong's position, and that's that's how balanced this uh, these tactics are. So anyways, I accidentally popped the ball up. I didn't mean to do that. And... Before we go forward, I know a lot of you guys are like Div 4, Div 3, Div 2 guys, and you guys struggle getting out of Div 3, Div 4. And this is an example of something I want to show you. So when you get put into a position like this, your back's turned. Now, I could have turned probably this way and then made the pass this way, right? But let's say that guy's not there. I just don't have the option. When you get into this scenario where you kind of just get, ah, shoot. So you can see I was trying to get there, but then I'm, I'm worried about Conte because Conte has Intercept Plus. I'm kind of back and forth on my decision. This is where you have to be really, really cheeky. And this is what I call peaking and bounding. 
and like trying to maintain the spot between these positions. And all you're trying to do is get one of these players to commit to an angle. So then you can break out. And so you're trying to find that space where see how this one commits in inverted. And so now both those players are together. This is where you need, this is what I call kind of, this is what I call shimmying. So when you go shimmy, 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 and that play goes back. So anyways, there's the manual run forward, I believe. Is that Garcia? Might be Garcia. And so, yes, it is Garcia. And this is where Garcia is actually really solid as well. He steps, steps, steps. We win the ball into spots. And so we're trying to be a little tiki-taka here. Just trying to get the ball one, two. And so we shift, and we try to open up that shot. So this is unfortunate. This is where... Musiala is on side here. Dude, I absolutely hate this guy because he uh, he uses the worst. It's really hard to see the, his defense. But basically right here, it looks like I'm about to shoot this way. And so he's going to manually pull down. That creates this tiny lane to shoot. And I'm expecting him to move the keeper this way. Therefore, I'm actually going to try to shoot in inside. Uh, but we accidentally active. I think we activated finesse shot plus, which actually goes against the mechanic there. Uh, even though it adds spin, it adds like some finishing mechanisms to it, like spin and rotation of physics. But like ultimately, it's it's against the proper mechanic there to shoot that way, I guess. Okay, defensively, here we go. We're just gonna defend that interior. He makes a bad pass. He's anticipating something different. Falls into the space. We're cutting back, and that's Veron. This is why you guys need. This is why Veron. I absolutely hate playing. Uh. I can't wait until people get rid of Veron and like the intercept plus goes away because I am so pass oriented. I'm such a pass heavy player. So this is where he's expecting me to do something different. Let's go forward and watch this. So as he spins, 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 he's kind of expecting me to go towards him. And so he's expecting to hit that. Now I break off. So I, that's, that's why I call a bluff. It's like a bluff movement. It's like anticipating what he's anticipating, right? So that's what kind of the game of wit. So if you guys are struggling at lower divisions, this is just a simple win here. It seems so simple here, but this is like trying to predict the future ahead of what he's predicting, if that makes sense. And this is a skill that I believe everybody should try to master and try to understand. But ultimately, you're just trying to anticipate him anticipating you. <laughs> and so it's, a, it's like a level three of Game of Wit. And so there we had it. And uh, this is where, unfortunately, this... Maybe I double dink there. I still don't know if it's going to get through, though. All the way back up. He makes a bad pass. I'm trying to, I was trying to jam through, which I don't recommend jamming, but you're in the 60th minute. Nothing's been working. So there's his rotation. I'd actually make a bad movement right here with Borea. So this is actually a mistake. So if you watch this, we're in good spot. We're in good spot. We're in good spot. And then out. So this is where he's broken me. So he should be rocking this ball right up to him. And he does. But his tactics are set to where he's going forward. And so that allows me to actually win the poach. And then wrong player, wrong pass. And just forced into tight situation. Offside trap to try to throw that off. And so in this scenario as well, this is actually a fake. This is a defensive fake. So what it looks like is I'm going to come at you. And then I just step back. So I throw the offside trap to make it give that appearance, and then I drop back. It's kind of a weird thing to do. That's just something I do myself. But anyways, oh, this is where it gets really weird is when I threw this offside. Oh, you know what? Look at look how weird this is. Um, I don't know how this happened. I remember this in game, but Frimpong and Marquinhos rotated positions really like a long time prior. Uh, and I'm not really sure why they didn't switch back. If we go, <laughs> if you see Frimpong all the way back in the 52nd minute, takes the position at center back, and Marquinhos takes the wide. That's so weird. That is so long. 58, 60 minutes. Dude, that's 10 minutes. Dude, that's over 10 minutes with the AI in the wrong spot. And that ultimately opened the shot up. Dude, if this happened in a pro series, man. And, like, that pushed me in such a weird spot. I remember that happening. And then, then Frimpong takes the interior position. I'm expecting, I'm expecting him to go this way. 
And so I'm expecting him to drop back. And so I'm just trying to play this right here. And so then he just keeps charging. This is super weird. It's, it's like almost like the AI just got real messed up. It's just like it was deciding to do something weird. For him. It's just, ah, you know, I'm just going to go this way. And so that's kind of where that pushed. Here's some creative runs. I'm just trying to find a work. And we get into a space. And we almost have this. This is where I'm using some sideways creative runs. So I pull him up. That half pressure gets me the run in between. And then I'm just trying to get that run through. We got the incisive pass plus. We're just not efficient enough. I'm actually looking to make this pass over here. I ha end up taking the shot. Now, this is where what if if I'm coaching to like coach a pro type of scenario, what I'm recommending in this scenario is the nutmeg skill and like trying to go back this way then maybe trying to hit this pass and letting him commit or like step overs into that space and then try to shoot. So that's where I could have extended the play. But when you get into a shot, you know what I mean? Sometimes you shoot, you shoot. Um, and so this is where, that's where like it's kind of subjective because like there's a lot of times where I just don't shoot because I know that I could work the play in and get a better, higher percentage shot. But then there's players, there's, there's mechanics in the game that allow some of those shots to, to be easier than harder, if that makes sense. And so it's kind of a balancing act. Do what you think is right and what's going to give you the best chance based off of your skill. So there's people that will shoot from like no angles. And I, as much as I hate this from like this angle, as much as I hate it, which it should be patched, if you are good at that, do it. That's not the way I like to play. That's not the way I coach. That's not what I will ever suggest because this type of stuff ends up getting patched, right? Um, but ultimately, do what you do at the highest probable outcome every single time, and then you'll see conversions. So that's usually how I would like to recommend and coach. Be efficient with everything. So this is, this is, a, this is a false step. So I don't usually do this, but what I saw from this position is he's going forward with Pedri. Okay, so let's think about why I did what I did here. Uh, first off, uh, EA don't know how to manage their, their game. That's not Berea, that's Frimpong. But anyways, um, this is Pedri going forward. So if I can win this ball here, this play is going to be one. This is, this is a full-on attack into what I call the queen's position, which is the best place to attack because you can literally attack in any direction. So if I can win the ball here, ultimately what I'm, I'm, it's basically off to the races. Now, here's my thought process, okay? So this is where you have to be, this is why you are the tactics, okay? So I'm tired of people watching tactics videos to look at tactics. No, 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 this is the idea. If I'm passive or aggressive, it changes everything. Now, if I can win the ball here, that's probably the most ideal. Chances of me winning the ball right here, not great unless it's all the way back here, right? And then maybe things are a little bit different, weirder, right? This is where I want to win the ball. I'm going to be a little bit more aggressive here. And so what I'm going to try to do is get him offside, and I'm going to try to close that passing lane down and win the ball. That's what we're going to try to do, okay? This is where skill comes involved. The best players in the world can convert this. This is where either you win or you lose when you be aggressive like this. Now, the proper thing to do if you're winning in the game is just not commit that and just drop like this. That's the, that's the right thing to do, ideally, right? Maybe like this because these guys will come back, right? Anyways. There's a difference between pass and aggressive. So I choose to be aggressive here. Now, if you look at my angle, my angle, I come in at this angle. I needed to come in at that angle or I needed to slide right there. And I didn't slide. And so that allows that little lane to occur. That's a relatively easy pass. So that is my bad. <laughs> that was a mistake, essentially, based off the distance on approach to be aggressive. However, if you look at the build, I still have a, a strong level of, uh, I, had a, I had a pretty, I had a strong formation 
ultimately i had a strong formation it's just marquinhos is really slow so like if i had a faster center back like let's say we had von Deven or a v, uh, vvd uh there's not even a chance that he gets that shot off now the pressure alone was able to apply that now if i'm playing a pro this guy this guy was like a 750 sr player 700 sr right so he's not like the best player in the world it, they would have cut back right they would have cut back i'm completely committed here I'm completely committed to taking that spot out. He could have cut back and then maybe hit like a through pass. He could have extended this play. And this is what I call the Mason Mount versus uh, the Cole Palmer. Okay, so if you guys are Chelsea fans, Mason Mount would just shoot from any angle all the time. And as a Chelsea fan, I hated Mason Mount because the plays that he would never be able to extend to play, <laughs> he would just rip shots from no angle, nowhere out of sight. And that's why I think his career ended up folding when he was actually at a, a high level is because he did convert some. But the, if you watch Cole Palmer and the way he plays, he would fake here, he would cut here, he would make a pass, right? If you watch a lot of those higher level players and whenever you see goals, really like easy goals, like the classic Barcelona goals, they're extended plays. So there's a chance to shoot here, but there's a chance to cut back and rip. So he should have cut back there. So I was I made a mistake. I got lucky on this defense. I got lucky. 100 percent I got lucky there. I will say that. Um, but if I was a little bit faster, if I was a little bit tighter, right? That's where those efficiencies can can make a difference. There's the overlap play. And so this is a mechanic that I'm trying to do, guys, is I'm trying to hit this effort touch into space, but it's really difficult because I'm at once you get to this line here, if you look right. Here, I'm animating, but I'm going like this. So my dribble movement's like that, which is clearly not the right thing. I need to dribble and hit that angle, right? And so then that ball gets cleared out. Um, but that's an effort touch into space. It really helps that first touch. I, I just strongly recommend learning it. If you don't know what that is, uh, find me on my live stream. But you guys can find me on twitch.tv slash John Sam's. Or sometimes I'm, I'm should be live here too though, but okay. So he he cheeks me out here. So he he beats me in a game of wit right here. I hate corners so much. Hate him. Hate him. Hate him. Hate him. There's a defensive structure. He actually breaks a position there. Um, he almost got through if he timed that right. And so we're defending that properly. So we're holding it to the strong side. There's the up. There's this. There's that false movement again. But then we recover. Do you see that? So the same concept here. I'm trying to win this ball against Pedri again. So this is this is a complete thought process. This is a tactical thought. Pedri is forward, therefore I can be aggressive. Whole line goes up. I'm going to try to draw him offside, and then I'm going to create the recovery if I miss. I miss, I create the recovery. We end up winning it. Now we need to turn, and I'm waiting for Pedri, and I just try to get that space. That's where I'm going to take risk. That's where I'm going to take chance, because that if I get past Pedri there... I get a huge opening. It's a huge, huge opening. And him, same thing here with Karchawi. Karchawi is where I'm going to be attacking. And then there's that opening again. Now we're behind, we're behind Neymar in that space. And it looks like he drew Neymar back, which is really random. Uh, that's, that's not a, or Rafinha. He drew Rafinha back to get a high work rate. He makes a really bad pass that goes into territory for me. And then I'm on side there, and I take that same shot that was open. So um, he makes, this is why passing is so important in this game. I, you just can't make a bad pass in this game. So like right here, he's fine. He's fine here. He makes a pass. So this is how the game reads this. This is how I read what the game reads. He's passing the ball at this angle. That's what he's trying to do. No, that's not what he's trying to do, right? He's trying to pass the ball to him. Let's re like break down this game and why this game is the way it is. Let's think about this. Okay, so if he's trying to pass the ball to him, let's. But where is he going to be trying to pass it? Right at me? Right at where he's at? Or avoiding the player, right? Because the thing about it is most likely if he passes into one of those two, he's going to intercept it. So what, what's happening with your passing is you're most likely making the right pass to the right space. 
but the improper ability on your passing is the player is running this way. So the player's running, charging this way, and you end up making the pass this way. Therefore, the game is no, the game reads that as an error, and it's going to read what's going to be behind the space. And that, what's behind the space, closest to me in regards to how much power you put on is me, which that's why it animates to me. So I've lost games doing this. I've won games uh, by being accurate with passes too. So that's kind of the change in passing. It's really, it's not that he made the wrong pass. It's that he made the right pass with the wrong player, against the wrong player momentum. I hope that makes sense. Because nobody's going to make a pass. It, how many times? I actually was watching the Chelsea game earlier today. And they pass the ball. It happens to wait fullbacks all the time where the the center back will like pass the ball or pass the ball backwards and the you're you're starting to run forward and then it just rolls out of bounds. This one happens all the time, right? So instead of him coming back on releasing pressure, he's starting to charge and they just pass this and it just rolls out. You're not going to make that. You don't mean to make that pass. And that's exactly what's happening in the game code. So we have to understand we just have to be better at passing. To me as I'm actually okay with that because I would say I one of my strengths is my passing. And so that's, that allows us the opening in the 80th, 70th minute. And then if we go into the, the actual the clutch part of this, what we're looking at is we're looking at the pinch point. So this is what I call the queen's position. We get the ball right into the attacking highway. We get it right into the attacking highway. We can go either way. And so it looks like I'm going to go this way. That's why he actually steps right here. And then that allows what I call the pinch to occur where the play goes inverted. And so then we can go wide, which then he actually steps again. That allows me just enough space there. So if he doesn't step there, he might have been able to recover, but he steps. So it's not always what you do. It's what your opponent does. And you have to be clinical against what your opponent's uh, improper decisions are. It's just the higher you go up, the less improper decisions are made and the faster the gameplay is played and so the faster the game the less the more mistakes and so it becomes one of those catch 22s you want to play fast enough to where you don't make you want to play fast enough to where your opponent makes mistakes but you also don't want to play uncontrolled to where you're making mistakes right and so that's the balance and so he he was put into a pressure scenario we played just fast enough that he made a mistake and so we were able to capitalize on it and so here we go again oh Try to get that step through, but that's where that intercept plus at this stage of the game is insane. So he steps there, and then he's going for a pause. And so one, two, here it is on the back. So here's pulled forward, players forward, play comes out wide. Inverted interior, interior, interior. So this is an example of, pulling, of uh, using wing defense if you guys get into a weird spot. So I attack with my fullback as I can see that this is going to break. So what's happening right now is I have initial pressure coming in from my left back. But what I recognize is I can grab Musiala and maintain the momentum. This is the trick. So if you guys watch my defense and I'm building the course out right now, talking about all this type of stuff. But basically, I pinch and move him this way in rotation. That rotates him into a level three attack, which again, that's more of a course definition. But basically... Then he gets pushed into a level three. And so he maintains a level three. And then now he goes back into it. And so we break, we balance the defense there by dragging Musiala there. So when you can defend with those wingers, I highly recommend it. This is where the game can freak out uh, against different players, guys, is right here. You got to be really clinical in these moments. This is, this is probably the most important part right here is when you get into a step like this and you it, receive the ball, as like an attacker because the game is right now referencing us as an attacker them as the defender i have to be really quick to move that play out to be able to get that pass out um i really hope that ea nerfed the ability to make tackles from like wingers uh because wingers aren't really making hard steps unless they're in like full jockey position i wish i wish like if if you if they're underneath like a certain position that it would be full full jockey type of thing um or like you to make a tackle imagine if you had to make a tackle you had to use 
you like had to be in like a full jockey to make a tackle. That might change. That might change this game. That might change. That might change the game. That would. That would completely change. If you had to be in a full jockey, like stand, you know what I mean? Or it's just like the RNG variables. Oh, maybe. Devs, EA devs. I hope you see this video. I, lo I actually like the idea of that. Because I was watching. Anyways, I, let's, I'm going to break through this goal here. So right here, we go into the step position. Here comes the break. So. I'm being a little cheeky there. There's a creative run. His full his center back comes down. This is where Veron's is terrible. Um, he's so his stamina is really low, and that allows me to have space. There's the cheek finish and finesse, and then that's how you drive it down. But guys, then he goes on to rage quit. But that's it for today. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys like this type of video, make sure to drop a like. If you guys like the foundation, let me know. If you guys like me going through my tactics, going through my squad, and giving you guys analysis. Or if you just like the analysis separate. If you guys need coaching advice, check me out on Medify.gg. Until next time, guys, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys in the next episode.